Is the cover two shell the Cincinnati Bengals kryptonite? Let's talk about it. What's up, Hootay Nation? It's the 513 with your boy J.E. on the Cincinnati Podcast. Happy Monday. I'm glad to be back with you all. Last week, I couldn't put out a show. I had some technical difficulties, so we had a little bit of trouble getting the show going, but we back. It's a beautiful Monday and another opportunity to talk about our Bengals. Today, we got another narrative that we're taking to the mat, talking about it, and really kind of getting to the skinny owner and talking about, hey, is the cover two shell the Cincinnati Bengals kryptonite? We know last season as a fan and really football savants watching it, we know when the Bengals face teams that play major, uh, majority or primarily cover two shell, which, and let me just break it down really quick. A cover two shell is when you have two high safeties. Um, I feel like a coach put my hands up like that, but you have two high safeties, right? It doesn't necessarily mean you're playing cover two. It could be four. Could be two, could be two man, could roll down and play cover three, uh, or you could play uh, quarters. I did say four, but there's a couple other coverages you could play as well, too. Really, all the coverages you can play, it's just about how late you rotate in the alignment and assignment to make sure you get to where you need to be. Um, The Bengals struggle against cover two shell. And uh, a lot of people, I heard some people talking about it saying, hey, this is a reason that. I have questions about the Bengals. They could potentially take a step back because of this. And a lot of people want to know, hey, why did the Bengals struggle against the cover two shell last season? And coming into the season, what can they do or what have they done to get better and prepare for the cover two shell and attack it this season? Now, cover three, right, was primarily is primarily a coverage that a lot of NFL teams primarily run, made famous by the Legion of Boom. Of course, a lot of teams ran cover three before them, but the Legion of Boom really made cover three famous. And a lot of teams, the NFL is a copycat league, tried to copy that blueprint and they ran the cover three scheme, tried to imitate what uh, the Seattle Seahawks did on their phenomenal run with that phenomenal defense. And let's just be honest, there hasn't been a defense like the Legion of Boom since the Legion of Boom. <laughs> that's uh, that's why they have the name. That's why they're recognized as one of the greatest defenses in history. And that's why they secured a Super Bowl. But that said, cover three is a very popular defense. A lot of teams in the NFL copied that and tried to run it and make it a part of their system. But what we're starting to see now in the league is a lot of teams are starting to run more too high safety, right? And what does that mean, right? Why is that? Why is it happening and what does this trend mean for the league? First of all, teams primarily play, you know, uh, single high safety, a cover three shell look is what people like to call it. Uh, there's a couple of different reasons, right? Sometimes you do show your hand right out of the gate, playing cover one, playing cover three. Maybe you rotate late and play two high safety, but the single high safety almost always gives away what the defense is doing. And it allows people to get to their drops faster, It allows you to put an extra person in the box to stop the run. Um, And also it allows a couple other different things as well, too. But with the two high safety, we can see a lot of teams going to this two high safety. The two high safety look is going to help teams defend the pass better. Right. And how does how does this happen? Because the two high safety look. It causes the quarterback to have to maybe be a little bit slower on their progression. They have to process what they're seeing make sure and check and confirm they know exactly what the coverage is. Is it cover two? Is it quarters? Is it man? Right. And the two high safety look might slow down the quarterback processing a little bit more. And with that being said, right, the two high safety maybe limits uh, the amount of deep shots teams can take, depending on the covers they actually end up running. And um, that being said, anytime you're making a player think about what you're doing uh, or think about what they're doing or what they're actually seeing, is an advantage to the defense. Anytime you're going against the offense, right? The defenses want to make offensive offenses think. 
and they want to make them second guess on what they're seeing. And they also want to make sure that they limit the big plays and, and uh, tackle underneath, right? Let them catch underneath, tackle, get off the field on third down. So a lot of that type of play you'll see you'll see uh, coming into play here as we kind of transition to the new NFL. It's a passing league. More teams are not running the ball as heavily. So you're going to take that extra man out of the box, give you an extra defender, limit the big plays, and make these quarterbacks work their way down the field. They got to earn it, right? So that's what the two high safety look is going to, is going to do. Um, going into the, this season, a lot of teams know that Joe Burrow was one of the highest rated QBs versus cover three or single high safety shell last season. Specifically, when faced with cover three, Joe Burrow was 123 of one, uh, 165 passes. So he completed 123 out of, out of 165. He threw for 1,400 yards, had 826 yards in the air, 10 touchdowns, two interceptions, and he, post, he posted a passer rating of 114, the highest passer rating in the NFL against Car 3 last season by Joe Burrow. So um, teams are going to know this going into the season, and we're going to see – the Bengals are going to see a lot more two high safety looks. So what can they do? to combat this or what can they do to be better than last season or how are they going to attack teams this season when faced with two high safety looks? And one thing the Bengals did that I think was very important is they upgraded the offensive line. Now, when you think about the offensive line, the first thing that people think about naturally is Joe Burrow and what it's going to do for Joe and how much time he's going to have in the pocket. But the reality is, in the beginning of the season, when teams are giving the Bengals single high looks uh, or two high safety looks, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for Joe Mixon in the offensive line to move those line, the linemen and linebackers and really gash them. Two high safety is susceptible to the run, right? The Bengals love the wide zone scheme. If they can get some outside zones and get some great runs and, and split, the, split the defensive line and get a hat on the linebacker, Joe Mixon really should have one of his better seasons. Um, in my opinion, I think Joe Mixon might be primed to have his best season ever as a Cincinnati Bengal with his best offensive line that he has. And I think a lot of teams are going to play the Bengals to stop the pass. But if the Bengals can find a way to get Joe Mixon going, scheme the run game up, get a great plan, attack these teams that are playing primarily too high safety on the ground, it is going to, I'm telling you, it's going to force teams' hands. They're not going to know what to do. They're going to say, hey, look, we have to play some three high safety looks. We might just have to show this team what, what, what we're doing because we can't afford to get gas in the ground. And once they get gas in the ground, opens up the air game. So it's a double-edged sword. You know, the Bengals will always be a passing team. Uh, I definitely know that, and I don't expect them to change their identity, but I do expect them to take advantage of the the – the less uh, having less people in the box, letting Joe Mixon cook. He's a super talented player, one of the best uh, NFLs in the running back in the uh, in the NFL right now, uh, one of the best running backs in the NFL right now, and um, he's a damn good player. And it's a, oh man, my apologies, I should have never said that, but he's a top five player, and uh, he he makes great plays, and he's a top running back. He's uh, he's shifty, he's powerful. And if he gets, you know, less people in the box, he's going to make a lot of plays and he can make people miss. And uh, Joe Mixon should have a great, great season this coming season on the ground. Now, another thing the Bengals can do against the cover two shell. Uh, and again, it's going to it's going to take some figuring out what coverage they're running. Primarily, a lot of teams, they you know, they run a lot of different coverages, but most of the time teams stick to what they do best. Right. If they're a team that runs cover two, great. They're not just going to automatically come out running cover four every single snap because uh, it's, you know, what the Bengals are about trouble with. They might mix it in and throw some wrinkles in there. But if they're a cover two team and they run cover two, well, they're going to run cover two. Right. So um, that, you know, another thing that they can do, though, against the cover two shell is. Once they figure out what the team is doing or what covers they're actually running, they can flood the zones, stretch the defense. 
design route concepts that stretches the defenders and really flood the zones, right? When you flood the zones and you confuse defenders on who they have or what assignment they have, uh, you could, that's when you have busted coverages. No matter, no matter what zone you're playing, uh, college, NFL, high school, at a certain point, every zone coverage turns into man. And if you can stress the defense and confuse defenders on who they have, if you can stress the zone, you might be able to bust some coverages open. It's not going to happen all the time, but one or two play, one or two big plays where you bust the coverage can really be a big deal. A lot of games in the NFL are determined by one, uh, one or two plays that determine the outcome of a game. So stretch, stress the zone, run the ball, uh, and really just protect Joe Burrow, keep him upright, right? Give him time in the pocket, allow him to have that time to process. A lot of time, a lot of times when the Bengals play uh, play too high safety or faced too high safety, I should say, Joe really didn't have time in the pocket, right? He had to process it, which you know he's a great quarterback, and he does he his a lot of his skills and what he does very well is process information and dissect the defense. But when you're playing the cover two shell and they're taking away you know the first two reads and defending the deep ball. Um, and you got to go underneath. Sometimes you got to get a little bit, you got to have a little bit more time, right? And he, he's going to have more time with this better offensive line, which is very exciting. And I'm looking forward to seeing that with this team. And I think that, you know, I think that they'll be able to really attack the cover two shell, stress the defense. And um, I really don't think the Bengals will have an issue. So is it their kryptonite? Maybe last season, but. I truly believe, and I think everybody, a lot of people have talked about this. The Bengals are taking a step forward. They brought in veteran offensive line talent. Hopefully, Coach Taylor takes a step in the right direction. He got better last season, and if Coach Taylor is on the tra trajectory that he has been since he's been here, he's gotten better every season. And the one thing I love about Coach Taylor is he trusts his players, and uh, he puts the onus on his players. He's a players coach, and, uh, you know, Last year, when he had a uh, pitch count on Joe Burrow, he held himself accountable in front of everybody. <laughs> and he said, hey, I need to do a better job. And uh, that's the kind of guy you want leading your team. That's why I think when the Bengals are faced with cover two shells next season, I think that, look, I, I know they struggled last season. I think they had some some trouble up front on the offensive line. They need to, needed to get better. But when they're faced with – a too high safety shell this coming season, I don't think it's kryptonite. I think the Bengals will be dynamite and they'll be lighting teams up no matter if they're playing single high safety or a cover two shell because the team is that explosive. Look for Tyler Boyd to have a big year because I do expect teams to play a lot of cover two shell. Look for Tyler Boyd to have a big year over the middle of the field underneath the linebackers, behind the linebackers, maybe splitting the safety because the cover two hole is that hole in between the safeties are both trying to defend the hash hashes. So right, right in between there, uh, Tyler Boyd might be running some posts there or stressing the defense vertically uh, and also Hayden Hurst too. So uh, this team, I think no doubt about it, are going to come equipped, ready to go. They already run a ton of verticals. They already do a lot of things to stress the defense. And uh, the offensive line has gotten improved. And with a guy like Burrow, he's great under pressure, but he's also really good without being under pressure. And uh, that's what we're expecting next season. So I don't think it'll be kryptonite. Like I said, the Bengals will be dynamite against the cover two shell. I appreciate you all tuning in. Hootay Nation. Have a great Monday, and we'll catch you next week.